Let's explore a little bit more, a little bit more stuff here. I'm going to go back down to foot on the ground, if it'll um, comply. What about this? If here's this person, small amount of weight, big belly. How's that going to influence the squat? Well, this sure isn't going to be over the feet because this is way back there and they are falling. They are falling right now. So somehow this person is going to have to shift over based upon where their center of mass is and their squat's going to look a little bit different. And you're going, but the weight's not. It's core out in front. Are they going to fall? No, center of mass. It's right there. Now it's different if that's more chest oriented and it's up here, right? But and then that starts to change. Let's say the person has this big center of mass, but now they've got this big weight on there. What does that do to things? Well, that may change their collective center of mass again, and they might be a little more like this, where that weight really is close to being that line of resistance. But this is a big influence also. And remember, we've got all kinds of stuff here that creates mass that adds to this thing. I don't like that. Let's do this. So. Um, while your knee doesn't have anything, you'll remember this from the center of mass, your knee doesn't have anything to do with lifting or dealing with the torque of this thing. It's only the stuff above it. These masses can become both influences in how you have to, what you have to keep over your feet, and do they become restrictive? Can this person, does he have to stop because his thighs just met this thing? So those are all, to me, very interesting.